Welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'll be speaking about one of my favorite topics, money. How to make more, save more, and spend wisely. From a young age I've been on a quest to make more and save more money. I remember as a teenager volunteering to vacuum the house for a fixed fee so that I could get a MacBook or working a few jobs in university during the semester just to have a little extra pocket money. And that's why when I started my internships I was so excited to finally have a steady stream of income for a few months. However, I quickly fell a victim to lifestyle inflation. This is where we earn more, so we also spend more as well. Now that I had a new title at work, I thought maybe I can buy some nicer clothes, or that designer handbag, or those new shoes, or start going for coffee more than a few times per week, or dining at fancy restaurants. Don't get me wrong, I'm a true believer in the treat yourself culture, but there is such a fine line between a one-time purchase and lifestyle augmentation that we have to be so careful of. By the time I started my full-time job in October 2019, I knew I wanted my relationship with money to be different. Like most things in my life, I wanted to be more intentional and more mindful of where my money was going and how I was spending it. So I began tracking my expenses the semi-old-fashioned way on Google Sheets, where at the end of the week, I would manually enter the date, the location, and the amount that I spent. This helped me really narrow down how much of my money I was spending and how much money I was saving at the end of each month and then on an overall basis as well. Obviously there are events that pop up that you can't really predict like a $2,300 wisdom tooth removal for myself, but I'm so proud to say that since starting full-time work in October 2019, I've managed to save 90% of my income and that makes me so happy. But by no means am I a financial expert, so please do what fits your situation, but I'll be sharing some tips and advice that really worked well for me. Firstly, having a why power and having goals. It can be so demoralizing and demotivating to tell yourself that you're going to save money and to save more if you don't really know what you're spending it on or saving it for. So at the top of my Google Sheets, I have a bunch of goals that I want to hold myself accountable to. And they don't have to be financial, they can be non-financial as I have on mine. But the goal is just to have something down like retire by 65 so that you know why you're saving money. Um, and of course, as you learn more about yourself and you realize what type of goals you want, you can adjust these. But just having a baseline for now is really, really helpful. Also, when I track my expenses, I have to answer if it aligned with my goals or not. And sometimes it doesn't align and I have to put a note because if it's like an online purchase or an impulse buy or buying something that's not plant-based or really suited towards my needs, I'll have to say no. And that's okay. The point is not to make yourself feel guilty, but the point is just not to have it get into a habit where you're just making all these purchases that you know are not aligning with your goals. Additionally, I found it really helpful to have specific dollar values of where I wanted my savings to land by the end of the year. So if you say, I just want to save more, but you don't really specify how much that is, you're giving yourself so much more leeway and so much more room to get away with it. Whereas if you say, oh, I want to save 5,000, 10,000, or whatever that number may be, you're holding yourself so much more accountable that even if you don't get there, at least you had a target rather than just saying more because that can be so vague and ambiguous. So the next principle is to look for more sources of income. If you're like me and you want to reach your financial goals faster and you're already saving the most that you can by cutting your expenses, there's only one way to grow, which is earning more. Now, you may not be in a position to negotiate a higher salary, which many of us aren't. So here are another few ways that really helps me generate that extra little pocket money. So the first is having a side hustle. So if you really like photography, baking, uh, making YouTube videos, blogging, whatever it may be, try to monetize it. There's nothing better than monetizing what you enjoy and getting money for being creative. The second is a marking, which is what I do. So I mark assignments and exams for the courses that I graduated from at university for. So that's a great way to earn money as well as keep your own technical knowledge fresh. The next is tutoring. So I know there's sites like Chegg or TutorWrite where you can actually tutor students based on your own schedule and rate. So if that works for you and you have something to share, then I think that's a great option as well. And the fourth is to declutter. So often we have so many things in our room that we're not using, but one person's trash might be another person's treasure. I personally used carousel buns or Kijiji to sell items that are gently used, and people have actually wanted them, which is surprising, but it's nice for me to get rid of it and then someone else to pay me for it. The third is to find how to do your hobbies for less. So two of my hobbies are traveling and saving money. And when I tell people that, I'm often given strange looks. And while I do agree that traveling does equal spending money, like with most things, there are ways to be smart about it and to save money while doing it. So I usually look for the best times to travel, which is off-peak, as well as deals on flights, hotels, and activities. Yes, I paid $500 to stay one night at the Marina Bay Sands. Um, I just can't believe it, like, I'm here. Hotel in Singapore, but it was one night, and what people don't see is the countless nights I spent at hostels, which are about $30 Canadian, so it really does equal out. 
or instead of taking Ubers or taxis, I opt for public transit, which may be a little cumbersome with all your luggages, but it's the best way to see the city and get a feel for it, as well as to save money. This doesn't just apply to travel, but for any of your hobbies. For example, I love doing yoga, but spending $30 on a yoga class is a little bit outside of my range, so instead I'll just opt for it, pulling out my yoga mat, typing in yoga by Adrian on YouTube, and following along to one of her videos. The fourth is to do your research. There's nothing worse than impulse buying something and realizing it's not what you wanted, and that you just wasted your hard-earned money. This is where the power of research comes in. Before I buy anything material, there's solid weeks, months, or even years of research behind it because I don't want to waste my hard-earned money and neither should you. So this involves looking at Reddit, watching YouTube videos, looking at blog posts, or even just reaching out to a network of friends if they had a purchase similar in the past just to get all the opinions before you spend your money on something. Oftentimes, it also serves as a way to see if you really want something. So for example, one day you might think, Oh, I really need these pair of pants that are like super fashionable. So you can research which stores have them, but then if you don't find yourself thinking about it the next day or in the next few weeks, then did you really need it? So it can also serve as a way for you to realize if you really want something. If every day you find yourself thinking, oh man, my life would be so much better if I had that thing, then maybe it is right for you to buy that. But if it goes, comes into your mind once and then leaves for a very long time, then you probably don't need it. The next is cost per use, and cost per use is my favorite metric to think about when I'm deciding to buy something, no matter how big or small it might be. For example, in 2017, I bought the Adidas Ultra Boost shoe, which retailed for about $230 after tax, which is so absurd considering it's a running shoe and I don't really run, but I did wear it to over 20 countries while I was on my study abroad experience, um, and I still wear them every single day, so that's been about three to three and a half years, resulting in a cost per use of about 20 cents, which is super economical compared to having multiple pairs of shoes and only wearing them a handful of times. Another great example is a dress that I bought a few years ago for $330, which is absurd for a dress, but I knew it was timeless and that I would wear it again, so I've worn it three times, resulting in a cost per use of $110, which is still a pretty steep, but in my mind, I know that it's super timeless, I can wear it again, and the whole point is to have less possessions, so while I could have bought three hundred dollar dresses, I know that having this one has so many more memories and it's so much more sentimental to me as well. So the next time you're thinking about buying something, no matter how big or small, think about the true cost per use and if that cost justifies the quality of the item. So for example, you might be buying something more expensive, but if you're going to use it for years and years to come, it's often better than buying something that's cheap that you'll have to replace more often. Cost per use is a great metric to find out the true cost rather than just looking at the full dollar value. Lastly, don't deprive and concluding thoughts. So the point of this video is not to deprive yourself or keep saying no to yourself because you're gonna feel so miserable if you just keep denying yourself all these things that you wanna buy that might bring you joy. Life isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. So while having all this money down the road sounds nice, if you're depriving yourself, if you're not buying things that bring you joy or going on experiences that would really change you or shape you as a person, then I don't really think there's any point to that. You might as well live life intentionally, spending money intentionally, and have a good life all the way rather than getting to that point and being so deprived with the state that you got there in. My personal views are not to get to a specific dollar value, but to have the financial freedom. Financial freedom to spend my time doing what I want without having to worry about money and having my assets generate money for me. But for now, we save, we spend wisely, and we invest safely. Sending you lots of love and light, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!